Chanel, welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we are blasting Seattle, Washington's Foul of Serpents. This is so goddamn good. Seriously, like, as much as I love of worms, of serpents, holy fuck. Like, seriously, holy fuck. What a step up from of worms and I love of worms but it's like almost an entirely different band here in the best way possible like where of worms had these passages that reminded me a lot of the Peaceville 3 like where most bands would go into like incantation doom and gloom territory foul went straight for the gloom of like my dying bride turn loose the swans and it, this new release I, I just can't put my finger on how insane it is from the vocal delivery everything it's just wow and I really love like the there's two covers kind of there's this more I'm just gonna call it a little more punkish cover black and white for the single and then the full length cover which is fucking bad ass and I'm not sure if this is their mascot or not but it kind of looks like it is but that's a tale for a different day but, hey man, hope you are doing well during these hard times. For sure, a year we will not forget. Well, as part of the weird times, here is this monstrosity called Of Serpents. Hope you get to enjoy it. Take care, stay safe, and thanks a lot again for your support and keeping the underground extreme music alive. Cheers, MP from Foul. Thank you so much. This is fucking awesome. Also, the cosmetics on the cassette, like, fucking A. Super, super sick stuff. It's a gold shell as well, so it matches up with everything. It's just awesome. Just like this next release, and I have to thank fucking Disguster at... Head Split Records for sending this my way. I'm so impressed with this band. I honestly did not know they were from fucking Cleveland, Ohio. I should have known that, but they legit nail, 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 nail that like Finnish death metal sound with no bullshit buzzsaw guitars. I'm sorry, I really am just... I'm so fed up with the fucking HM2 shit. Just stop. Please stop. Like, there's some bands that do it and it's like, okay. Like, if you're into HM2 pedal worship, you know, cool. But just go buy a copy of Entombed Left Hand Path and you're good. Same with, like, Dismember. Get Dismember like an ever-flowing stream, and you really don't need any of these other bands' recordings at all. Like, to me, those two albums, like, they kind of nailed that sound that all these bands go after. Like, and I kind of felt even, like, five years ago, going on, like, six years ago, that sound was starting to be oversaturated in the like, death metal scene and hardcore scene especially it was like people were listening to Wolverine Blues again and like basing their hardcore records off that album's production but that's a tale for a different day we're here to talk about this head split records monstrosity that is Kernuji Ah. Uh. Fucking forlorn and forsaken. The F word is not in front of the title. It's forlorn and forsaken. It's just... Wow. This is awesome. 
I mean, they even have a sentenced cover song on here. So you know this band, they, they fucking understand death metal. And they've been around the block too as well. But this right here is such a killer slab of classic sounding Finnish death metal that happens to hail from Cleveland, Ohio. Which is awesome. But they cover when the moment death arrives and just do it so well. I, I, it's worth the price alone of getting into this bad boy. But I, I love the layout. It's super old school. And I don't, I don't like calling things old school, but like there's no other way to really sum this up. I'm also not sure if this is my buddy Chris. No, it's not. For some reason, I thought that was my buddy Chris who plays in uh, Blasphematory. They just look similar. I'm sorry about that. But holy shit, is this band awesome. I mean, you could tell from the Rotivore long sleeve, you're getting into some fucking killer death metal here. It's one of those things, like, when I was younger, I would go to the shows and I would, like, look at what t-shirts that, like, band members were wearing. And this was, like, before the internet was super, you know, everybody had the internet. I'm talking, like, AOL. I, I still had, like, my AOL fucking username and shit. And AIM and whatnot. I remember getting, like, media files and we used to transfer them on there like and you would get this just blurry fucking mess but then you know I remember after I graduated high school around 2003 that's when you could start sending like QuickTime files and they weren't all fucking compressed you got the the real fucking deal and you know to me, that was all because of Mac computers. I think it's just... Is it Apple now? I always just call it Mac. But ever since kindergarten, we never really learned PCs. It was always Macintosh. And I'm glad that I got to learn that way. But anyways, what makes this stand out from the rest? Carnugia... Forlorn and Forsaken, it legitimately sounds like this long lost slab of Finnish death metal, even though it's not at all. And the fact that this band is from Cleveland, Ohio, again is going to show that the Midwest death metal scene right now is just on fucking fire. There are so many good bands in Ohio especially, but also, obviously, Chicago. It, it's just sick. I feel like those two states are just killing it. And then, like, you go to Wisconsin, and you have, like, Ossuary and stuff. Like, there's so many awesome bands out there. And Carnugia, they have a nice little write-up in the new head split zine. And they discuss, you know, the new record and whatnot, Forlorn and Forsaken. Which, I love the cover art on here. I forget who did the vinyl. It might have been Blood Harvest. Or maybe Blood Harvest did the last release. Uh, real quick, let me just skim through real quick. Oh, the first EP that came out on Blood Harvest Records, but... That's called Condemned to Obscurity. And then they got an opportunity from Lord of the Flies Records. So they did two covers for fun. And a full length was always in the cards after the EP. So here we are. And that's fucking sick because you got Paul Gorefield on vocals. That's awesome. But, uh, you know. Um, hold on real quick. The logo was drawn by a Swedish friend, and Brian and Larry wrote most of the early songs musically and lyrically. 
Dwayne's priorities changed as he has two kids and two jobs and just couldn't dedicate his time to it anymore. It was a friendly split and we asked Paul of Embalmer because we're all longtime friends in the scene and he's a perfect fit. He understands our vision and he's into the same shit we are so it is perfect. There you go. That's one of the reasons why this is so fucking good. Carnugia, Forlorn, and Forsaken. Paul Gorefield. Fuck yes. I, he's one of my favorite vocalists. Period. But like, I really love this write-up right here. Like, for example, I don't think you guys could have delivered anything other than the pure old school sound. No wacky experimentation, wimpy, happy sounding parts, etc. Your drums are solid as fuck. And to me, I hear a lot of your old band Decrepit in the s drumming style. I forgot this has members of Decrepit in it. If you've never heard Decrepit, yo, check out Decrepit, because you'll be all fucking... That band is so sick. But, uh... I hear a lot of your old band Decrepit in the, in the drumming style. Was it easy to deliver this final product? Does it come natural? Was it a specific choice to keep it meat and potatoes, death metal only? You hit it right right on the head with the meat and potatoes reference. That's exactly what I slash we wanted for this band and album. Just simple and to the point evil and dark sounding death metal. Fuck yeah. Again, one of the reasons this is such a fucking banger. And, uh, let me get to this one part that kind of made me laugh a little bit. Uh, la 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 I apologize for taking forever. I should have known this stuff ahead of time. Here we go. Sorry. But what other influences say went into Forlorn and Forsaken? You guys choose to cover a song by Sentenced. A heavy rendition. Going off that, some of the riffs and the tone remind me of the old Finnish bands. Not really the Swedish buzzsaw sound, thankfully. It says thankfully, not my words, but I agree. Yeah, the original idea slash concept of the band was to create and play dark sounding death metal from the early 90s. That's when we all came up, we're old bastards, ha ha ha. Nah, but seriously, it was a glorious time and we all love the old stuff. Especially the Swedish slash Finnish scene as well as the United States bands like Incantation and Immolation. And yeah, while we love the buzzsaw guitar sound, we're definitely not one of these new clone bands. That's what I wanted to get at, and I highly recommend picking up Newsletter number 23 by Headsplit Records. Great reading in here. There's a Worm interview with uh, Phantom Lord. It's fucking sick. Like, definitely get into it. Did I just say Phantom Lord? I meant to say Phantom Slaughter. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I apologize. I'm a dumb fuck sometimes. But... If you're a fan of early 90s Finnish death metal especially, like, think of Demigod, Early Sentenced, Convulse, yeah, chances are extremely high, Forlorn and Forsaken is gonna have a hard time getting off of your cassette deck, because it fucking rules. Hails to fucking Carnegie for just absolutely nailing that sound and also making something that it sounds, you know, 
as refreshing as it sounds rotten. And that's what makes a death metal record awesome. It's when you can add these older elements, but make them work with these newer ones as well. Churn them all around, and before you know it, you have a record like Forlorn and Forsaken by Cleveland, Ohio's Carnegie on Headsplit Records. Just absolute grade A death metal from the Midwest. Although, like I said, it sounds like it's from Scandinavia, it's not. It's from fucking Cleveland. So, definitely get into this. You get nine original tracks and a fucking sentence cover. So, you're winning if you just get a copy of this before it sells the fuck out. I'll put a link to buy in the video description. But this is just so fucking good. Like, every song on here... Awesome. Like, one of my favorites, though, is, like, Shroud of Damnation and, I would say, All-Consuming Grief. Really good stuff. There's some gourmet influences on here as well that are very, very well done. But we were blasting Seattle, Washington's Death Doom Masters, Foul of Serpents. This is so fucking good so far this is definitely on my albums of the year list I'm not sure if they consider this an EP or a full length it's long enough to be a full length like there's songs that are like 12 minutes long and it's just so on the fucking money trust me for a death doom release I can't recommend anything else at the moment more than Of Serpents by Foul. It's that fucking good. Seriously, if you're a fan of Death Doom Metal and you liked Of Worms, this is like... If Of Worms, like, legit could rot and you just left it out in the hot sun and it just fucking rotted and turned into this just fucking sentient being of filthy, heavy fucking death doom metal. Like, Foul now, like, shares more with, like, Mortiferum than they did with Paradise Lost. And it's fucking awesome. So, Foul of Serpents, get into it, and definitely get into Forlorn and Forsaken, by Kernugia. Kernugia. So fucking good. And one more look at this cover art. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be like some Lovecraftian de like deity or something. But that's what it looks like to me. But who knows. It does look old school as fuck though. And I love it. So... If you're a fan of early 90s Scandinavian death metal, you can't go wrong with Carnugia, Forlorn, and Forsaken on the Mighty Head Split Records. Thank you, Dylan, a.k.a. Disguster, for sending this my way. Much appreciated, because this is such a fucking banger. Nice hard shell. It sounds great, it looks great, and I can't recommend it enough. Get into this shit. Especially if you're new to the game and you don't know too much about like early 90s Scandinavian death metal. This is a perfect like gateway music drug whatever. You know what I mean. This is a perfect gateway into the fucking void of depravity that is early 90s Scandinavian death metal. Like, the U.S. had their own sound going, and overseas they had their own sound going as well, which is why a record like this kicks so much fucking ass, because it comes from Cleveland, Ohio, and not like Helsinki. So, definitely get into it, and definitely get into some foul. Both of these releases here are grade A 
metal. But as always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. Hails to Foul and Hails to Head Split Records. I always love the support. And thank you all at home for watching, you fucking rule. Hails.